Hi there, my name is Robert Asher and I'm an evolutionary biologist and I thought I'd make a video on how to combine morphological and molecular data into a single phylogenetic analysis or into a single matrix that you, you can then use to estimate the phylogenetic, phylogenetic position of fossils in the context of the living species to whom they're related. And the particular example I wanted to draw on from the paleontological side of things, or from the anatomical side of things, was this one published in 2018 by Adam Huttenlocker and, and colleagues from the lab of Jesse Lowe, the University of Chicago. And of course, they're writing about this Cretaceous mammal, uh, this, this Cretaceous uh, Haramayad, um, and this is an animal that's been extinct for tens of millions of years, and there is no genomic data for it. There's no soft tissues, no DNA, nothing, except, of course, for the morphology, and the morphology is quite impressive on this fossil. So these authors did a really nice job um, writing their paper and collecting data and making it accessible to investigators like you and me. And if you look at their, here's the, the website for their paper, a uh, very high profile nature paper. Here's the supplementary data that you look through the paper, you find the supplementary data. And if you scroll down this PDF of their supplementary data file, it's, it's long, you get this part here. That's their morphological character matrix. All they've done here in this part of the paper is just pasted in the Nexus file, which all has a lot of things that aren't gonna be necessarily familiar at first glance, but the, the, the bread and butter here, the crucial bit is what you're looking at here. This is the Nexus file um, showing you a bunch of usually zeros and ones and occasional question mark and plus a, a genus name like Thrinaxodon, for example. These are all Mesozoic mammaliform or advanced cynodont uh, uh, species, all fossils related, more closely related to living mammals than they are to any other um, uh, group of organisms alive today. And if you keep going down here, most of these are fossils, but at the very end and scattered throughout their matrix, you have quite a few living taxa. I'm just gonna look briefly at, I'm just highlighting here in, in my PDF here, just a handful of living species. So Macropus is a kangaroo, that's another Diprotodont acrobatis, here's a koala. This is a bunch of marsupial mammals. So here I've got these uh, highlighted taxa from the Hutton Locker et al. morphology matrix. This samples only living taxa. And now that I've selected it, I'm just gonna copy. So I'm gonna hit Control C and then I'm going to paste it into a blank um, notepad file. I'm happy to be using Notepad++, but any plain text editor where you can control the word wrap is, is perfectly fine. So here I'm going to hit Control V for paste. And here we have all those uh, taxa then. There, there are a bunch of things in here though that you have to sort of get rid of. So for example, you'll see word wrap is off here, right? So clicking on word wrap doesn't make any difference. So what, you're, what you've pasted in here from the PDF file, from just selecting this stuff, or all the white spaces and all the carriage returns, and um, you, you, you generally should get rid of those. So in Notepad++, it's very easy. You just select the character that you want to uh, replace. Um, and so I can hit Control H for replace, and then I'll just uh, get rid of that particular carriage return, and you see that's exactly what it what it did. So now what I want to do is just go through all of that and make a nice smooth, um, I'll go to the next carriage return, which you can see it's found up here in the corner. I'll replace that. And you can use regular expressions and just do it all in one keystroke or a few keystrokes. Um, but I'm just going to clean this up for a moment and come right back to you with the clean version. Okay, so here I've got all the white spaces and carriage returns have been uh, removed, so all the data for each genus is all on the same line now. So now if I hit word wrap, you see it, you know, it'll, notepad will just change that so as to facilitate ease of, of viewing, and then I can just unclick word wrap and I'm back to what I wanted. So this makes it, in my opinion, easier to read. Um, so these are just seven living taxa, and actually the whole point of doing this, from my understanding, is really to be able to combine living and and fossil data. So I'm just going to go back to the Hutton Locker et al. supplementary data, scroll back up here. They actually have quite a few of these living species. Here are a couple fossils, Myolestes, Pucadelphes. These are all 
paleocene fossils from a site called Tiwampa in Bolivia. And there are no, I mean, these are not as old as the Gondwana theories that Huttenlocker et al. are focusing on in their paper, but they're still old. These are 60 plus million years old. So um, I'm, and I want them in my matrix. So I'm just going to do the same thing, copy both of them, control C, and then go to the very end of my text file and I'll just add them right in here. And I'll just do the same thing I did with, with the others to get rid of the carriage returns. So here they are, Myolestes and Pukadelphes, together with my seven living marsupial genera in what is, I hope, going to be a useful, uh, at least in a pedagogical sense, matrix combining DNA and morphology. So speaking of DNA, these are all, these seven taxa, at least, not the two fossils, but these seven taxa are all not, um, uh, they're all well documented in the literature. So I'm going to draw on a different paper here. This is uh, a paper published last year by Nathan Upham and colleagues. Um, and in this paper, they published an alignment, a DNA alignment, for over 4,000 different species. So the size of the alignment itself is it's reasonably big. I think about 40,000 aligned nucleotide sites. I mean, it's pretty far removed from a genome. Um, and there is a lot of missing data in it. So not all the species were completely known for all of the, of the genes that they sampled. Nonetheless, it's still a really nice um, uh, sample. So I'm going to draw on what they did. And I just, I, I went into the uh, close biology paper from Upham and colleagues, got their supplementary data. And this is, it's not a PDF. It's just a plain text file. And in fact, it's already formatted uh, in a Nexus format. Not, you don't have to go through this PDF intermediate. And here it is. And you can just keep scrolling through this alignment. And there are, like I said, all, over 4,000 different species in here. And um, I'm pretty sure all of those living marsupials are going to be in here. So let's start with the kangaroo, with Macropus. So I'm, all I'm doing here is hitting Control F for find in Notepad++ plus plus, um, and looking for Macropus. And sure enough, there's one of the uh, Macropoded species that they sampled. And I'm just going to select it. Macropus eugenii, I hit Control C for copy. So, I mean, some of you may be asking, well, what was the species that, that Huttenlocker had all sampled for morphology? I'm sure they say somewhere what that was. I don't know off the top of my head. I don't really care at this point. This is just a pedagogical exercise. So I'm going to copy Macropus eugenii and go back to my other file. With So this is the, what you see here with the, with the numbers and some question marks are the morphology data, and now I'm going to start adding the DNA. So here's my first text on Macropus eugenii. At this point, I'm just going to have to remember, write down somewhere else, um, what species this was, but I don't want this to have this whole name here. I want this to just be in the same format as the Macropus that sampled for morphology. So I'm just going to call it Macropus. And these dashes represent part of the alignment, and here is, you know, the first residue didn't, was, it wasn't clear, so it just starts with these bunches of T's, right? And that's this DNA alignment according to Upham et al. I'm not going to tweak with their alignment at all. I'm just going to join the morphology and molecules here. So what I'm going to do now is go through each of these other genera, at least the living ones, in the Upham, Upham et al. alignment and paste those in here as well, just like I did a moment ago. So I'll come right back to you. Okay, so here is the remaining, here are the remaining data from the Upham et al. Uh, analysis combining the same genera sampled for DNA as were sampled by morphology or sampled for morphology by Huttenlocker et al. And just, I know some of these sequences actually they have a lot of holes in them, um, but when you scroll long enough, you do see segments, you know, where all of the genera are sampled for at least some DNA. And also notice just in here in word wrap, it's not correctly aligned, but that's not a big deal because you'll notice that the different, the length of each genus name is different in each one. Um, so, you know, obviously that's, uh, you don't expect to see the um, true alignment just by pasting in, into uh, a text editor necessarily. Um, but you do expect that each one of these lines after the genus name and after the space will have exactly the same number of characters as the preceding one. Um, with morphology, that's not necessarily the case because you can have polymorphisms. And let's see if we can just see any offhand. 
right here. It looks like we don't. Um, but usually, you know, if an investigator wasn't sure if a character state or maybe the, the genus exhibits different character states in different taxa, you'll see a parenthesis 0, 1, for example, and parenthesis, and that just means that it's a polymorphic taxa. It just looks in the particular taxa we selected here, they're, they're not polymorphic. In any event, so getting back to the task at hand, um, I have these two fossils, Myolestes and Pukadelphes. Of course, neither Upham at all nor anyone else in the history of biology have ever come up with genetic data for these uh, 55, 60 million year old South American fossils. And I don't expect it's going to happen anytime soon. So we need to know what to put here. We have to put something. And of course, the answer to that is we put question marks. And we don't put any old number of question marks. We put exactly the same number of question marks as there are DNA residues in the Upham et al. alignment, A's, T's, G's, and C's, plus the uh, gap characters and occasional question mark. And Upham et al. provided that, right? So we go back into their um, Nexus file, and here it is. Number of characters is 39099. So after Myolestes and after Pugadelphes, we have to add 30,000, 39,099 question marks in order to uh, make this complete. So what I'm going to do now is just remind myself of that number. So the alignment is 39099 sites. And actually, I have to do the same thing in the Hutton Locker et al. for reasons that will become clear in a moment. Um, and so I'm going to go back to the PDF of, of Hutton Locker et al. Uh, in the top of their uh, Nexus file, and here's the same information, number of characters 538. So, as is often the case, the morphological data set uh, is much smaller, much more informative per site than a molecular data set, but still uh, much smaller overall. So that's 538 characters. Okay, so I've now got 39,099 sites, or I'm sorry, 99 question marks for both of the fossil taxa. Uh, you can use whatever fast and efficient means of generating such question marks. Presumably that doesn't mean hitting question mark thousands of times. Um, uh, in any event, now I need to make this really into a nexus format, which it isn't really. What I have right now are the morphology for seven living taxa plus two fossils from Huttenlocker. I have the uh, DNA alignment for seven living taxa and then two fossils represented by uncertainty, all question marks. This still has a few steps to go in order to be readable by a program like PowerPoint or TNT or, or something. Um, so what I want to do now is I'm going to uh, go to a paper that yours truly published way back in 2007. Um, and in this paper I had, it's just a, a, a publicly available um, file that is still on this same website that tell, that gives the kind of format that you need for a combined data nexus file. Lots of people have done this. It's just it's the one I did, you know, however long ago that was. And so I'm going to refer to it now. And the basic, you can see the website right there if you wanted to find this again. Um, I suppose I'd be on looking at that, looking at it in this video. Now all I'm going to do is copy that initial format. I have to include matrix here as well. This is the basic steps you need for a Nexus formatted uh, phylogenetic data file. So I'm just going to, I've selected it, I'm going to hit Control C for copy, and then I'm going to go back to my uh, text file and add all that into the top, right? Um, this, anything between these uh, square brackets is a is just text that you can use to remind yourself what's going on here. So maybe you want to write, <clears throat> write something like a combined morphology from Hutton Locker 2018 plus DNA from Upham 2019, for example. So a few other things you have to change. Remember, I just copied it from this paper from 2007, and there aren't 53 taxa. In the current analysis, there are only seven living plus two fossils. So there are nine taxa right there. Right, so I'm telling Nexus what this uh, file has. Nine taxa, and then I have the number of characters. That's, of course, number of characters in this whole data set is 39,637. I just replaced that there. 
Okay, so here's another trick. The last I checked, what you had to do in, in order to have a combined DNA morphology nexus file is to have as your data type DNA, even though this first block is not DNA, it's morphology. But after DNA, you just you add in the symbols that you have for your morphological character state. So this is it. Now, whether you actually have character states four and five, there's a four. I don't know if there are any fives in here. Yep, there's a five. We have to ask now, are there any sixes? Because if there are six character states, then we're going to get a, a mistake. So obviously, this is not a character. That's the number of, of the overall number of characters in the header to my nexus file. I'm just going to keep looking for sixes, and that's the only one. So I think we're pretty confident that actually that all the character states are accounted for by symbols zero to five. Um, I don't really need this. If you had some kind of character state that represented inapplicable or something, you might represent it with some other symbol besides question mark. But um, in Hutton Locker, they didn't. It's just question marks. I'm going to leave that in there anyway, so it doesn't do any damage. Missing data are question marks, gaps, or dashes, very typical. Interleave is very important <coughs> because what you're basically telling um, the whatever software that's going to read this is you have multiple blocks of the same set of taxa. So here we have the first block showing these nine taxa, seven living, two fossils, followed by another block of data that's repeating the same taxa. You know, so if you delete an interleave, it would assume that these are different taxa, but that would be wrong. So you need to have interleave in there. And I want to treat gaps as missing data, equivalent to missing data, not as fifth character states. So I, I achieve that end with this command. <coughs> Excuse me. And then the next command here is matrix. And then all I have to do here at the very end I'm just going to clean it up. Well, I'll keep that space in there, make it a little more legible. I put a semicolon and then end. And that's it. Now I'm going to save it and say combined next to my desktop. And then let's see if it works. So let's see now. <coughs> Here's my, my icon for, for the latest version of Pulp. There's this file that we just edited. Right, combined next, right? That's what we just edited. Here's a moment of truth. If I drag this over to Pulp, does it read it? Okay, so I'm going to hit Control R to execute, and there it is. It works. We have a combined data file representing the morphology from Huttenlocker et al. plus the DNA from Upham et al. So I hope that was useful to you, and um, as as uh, I hope to post more videos in the near future. Thanks for listening.